Hi everyone, this is Book Cravings, and guess what? My new Folio Society books just arrived. I'm sorry for the lightning, but I couldn't wait until morning to record this video, so let's get it started. This will be a huge Folio Society unboxing. I'm too clumsy and slow, so I will speed up things a little bit. It took me more than 30 minutes to unpack all these books, so I don't like longer videos. I would try to keep this under 15 minutes, so I will add it down a little bit. I bought these books in January. They were all on sale at Folio Society's website, so they were like a bargain comparing to the original price they all have. Without further ado, let's see the first title. The first one is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Guys, many of these books are really well known, but in case you don't know them, I will read the blurb. This one is one of the most influential novels of the 20th century. It is both a gripping thriller and an ingenious parable about the nature of civilization. Following a plane crash, a group of schoolboys is left marooned on a tropical island. Their initial attempts at cooperation soon flounder and, as the winner of civilization wears away, their primitive instincts are unleashed with horrifying consequences. Next is Slaughterhouse 5 by Kurt Vonnegut. This is one of the greatest anti war novels ever written. In a brilliant blend of science fiction, history, and memoir, Slaughterhouse 5 tells the surreal story of Billy Pilgrim, um, stuck in time and finds himself catapulted between his experience as an American GI in Nazi Germany, his post war life as a successful optometrist, and his capture by aliens who imprisoned him on the planet Traumadore, where, as well as being welcomed in the pneumatic blossom of former earthlings, he discovers that time, like death, is illusory. Let's continue with Kazuo Ishiguro. The Second World War has ended, and Darlington Hall, once a great stately home with 20 servants, is now reduced to a staff of four, shut up most of the year, its future uncertain. Everything Stevens has lived by, his perfect composure and questioning service, now appears to him in a different light. Lord Darlington has died a broken man, and those left behind, those who put their trust in him, are facing the remains of the day. The next book is The Princess and the Goblin by George MacDonald. Princess Irene lives in a large house, half castle, half farmhouse, on the side of a mountain. She is cosseted and loved by the whole household, who look after her while her king papa is away traveling his kingdom. Little do they know that an army of goblins far below the ground is planning to storm the castle. To defeat them, Irene must rely on help on the minor boy, Curdy, and on her beautiful, mysterious great-great-grandmother, who secretly inhabits the castle tower. Next, a book that is very dear to me. One day I'll explain why. Let's go to the blurb. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. The animals of Manor Farm have risen up. Driving the brutal farmer Jones away, they set up a model society, aiming to educate and govern themselves fairly. But the idealist Snowball is soon banished. Under their charismatic new leader Napoleon, the pigs become corrupted by power until there is very little to distinguish them from their former oppressor. Continuing up, The Outsider by Albert Camus. This book was my favorite for many years. Merceau is a young French Algerian who leads an outwardly blameless life, going to work as a clerk, eating at a small local restaurant, swimming with his girlfriend Marie. One day, he shoots a man dead on the beach. The man was an Arab and an enemy of Merceau's friend Raymond, yet there was no reason for Merceau to seek him out. Questioned by his lawyer, the magistrate and the prison chaplain, Merceau can only say that he killed the man because of the son. He refuses to display any remorse. What is more, he does not appear to grieve the recent loss of his mother. It is for this refusal to be a hypocrite, as much as for the crime itself, that he is condemned to be executed. The next book I chose based on some reviews I read on Goodreads. It's called The Midnight's Children by Salman Hushidi. 
This book was voted the Booker of Bookers in 1993 and it said it is a captivating allegory of modern India. Born in 15 August 1947, at the precise moment of India's independence from the British Empire, Salim Sinai is celebrated in the press and welcomed by Prime Minister Nehu. As Salim grows up, he realizes he shares a fate with 1,000 other children born in the initial hour of India's independence, all are gifted with supernatural powers. Salim's gift is telepathy, and his destiny is inextricably linked to one of these midnight children in particular, the son of a poor Hindu woman with whom he has snapped at birth by a well-meaning midwife. We are done with the first box, let's start with the second one. We still have more eight books to go. Next is The Good Soldier by Fox Maddox Fox. When John Doe sits down in an English country house to write the saddest story he ever heard, he knows only some of the passionate and tragic events which have passed. Slowly, as he writes, five tangled lives are presented to us. John Doe and his wife Florence are wealthy, leisured Americans living on the continent. Their close friends, Edward and Leonora Ashburnham, accompanied by their devoted niece, Nancy Rufford, send a perfect English family. But behind the Edwardian façade of elegant ease and correctness lurks secret layered upon secret. Next is a book by Charles Dickens. Actually, Dickens' London is a selection of celebrated essays by Charles Dickens uh, with a total of 26 essays including Greenwich Fair, Early Coaches, Private Theatres, A Parliament Sketch, Gin Shops and Scotland Yard. This is a collection with original illustrations by George Cruikshank and, according to Folio Society's website, remains one of the most popular titles ever published by the Folio Society in spite of being out of print over 30 years. And now the book that by far I was most excited for, Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. The Pickwick Papers launched Dickens' career when he was in his 20s. The format of monthly serial publication, together with the picaresque nature of the comic subject matter, created a huge popular following for the young novelist, rich in sentimental appeal for both Dickens and his public. From the cricket match at Dingley Dell to the parliamentary hustings at, at Eaton's Will, from the aphorisms of Cockney Boots himself, Sam Weller, to the somnolent fat boy and crafty Mr. Jingle, the Pickwick Papers radiates in the words of G. K. Chesterton that sense of everlasting youth, a sense as of the gods gone wandering in England. Let's continue with A Traveller in Time by Alison Utley. Exploring an ancient house in the idyllic countryside, Penelope accidentally travels through time to the magic and intrigue of Elizabethan England. This is one of the most beautiful editions I'm showing you guys today, and it will probably be one of the first from this bunch I will put on my TBR. We are almost finishing here. The next one is Metamorphosis and Other Stories by Franz Kafka unforgettable and it has one of the best first sentences ever written in my opinion when Gregor Sansa awoke one morning from troubled dreams he found himself changed into a monstrous cockroach in his bed this is another book that it's very dear to me and I used to enjoy a lot Kafka's works when I was younger hopefully I'll be able to reread Metamorphosis soon and get to know the other stories that are included in this book. The next book is simply gorgeous. It's a title by Virginia Woolf. This is Orlando. Posing as a biography, Orlando spends 400 years in the fantastical life of a young nobleman whose adventures take an unexpected twist when he wakes one day to find he has become a woman. As Folio Society website states, this exuberant book has been described in many ways 
Virginia Woolf declared it was a writer's holiday, a break from the seriousness and earnestness that she felt bound by in her career as a novelist. To Jeanette Winterson, who introduces the folio edition, it's a joyful fantasy, a historical novel and a savage satire on sexism. And to Nigel Nicholson, Orlando is the longest and most charming love letter in literature. I warned you, it's a huge unboxing. The next book is Oscar and Lucinda. Compelling romance, epic tale of misadventure, cutting parable of cultural imperialism, Peter Carey's Oscar and Lucinda is overwhelmingly a story of all-consuming passion. It was the first of Carey's two Booker Prize winning novels. The last book in this huge haul is The Silver Sword by Ian Serrayer. Three Polish siblings, Ruth, Edek and Bronia, are fending from themselves in the outskirts of Vassal towards the end of the Second World War. Having received a message from their father, the three children, together with an orphan Jan, make their way across Europe to find their parents in Switzerland. With them is a talisman, a silver letter opener, in the shape of a sword, salvaged from the ruins of their house. So, this was the last book in this unboxing. I told you it was a huge Folio Society haul. I bought these books, as I already told you, with a huge discount. It was the New Year big sale at the Folio Society website. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See ya and thanks for watching!